In today's maintenance video, we are going to be replacing a direct mount chainring. Uh, the principle is the same no matter what brand and what cranks. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using race face cranks. Okay, so a little bit about chainrings themselves uh, and the way that you fit them onto the cranks. In this case, it's like for like. The one on here actually just got damaged in the crash, uh, so we're literally replacing it with an identical one. Same size. Now this is an important thing. If you're not replacing yours with the same size, if you're, for example, going for a bigger size, make sure there's enough clearance on your frame. Now most modern one by systems like this will have clearance for up to a 34 tooth. It is possible to fit larger chain rings, but it does depend on the chainstay clearance on your bike, the Q factor as well. So there's a lot of different things to take into account here. So don't just go buying a 38 tooth, for example, and think it's gonna fit on your bike if you've only got a few millimeters of clearance with a 32 on there. Uh, you can check this with your manufacturer and it'll tell you what sort of clearance you have. Worst case, you can widen the Q factor essentially uh, to give yourself a bit more room by putting spacers in there. It's not ideal because it can mess with your chain line. Now your chain line, essentially you want to have the chain ring lining up with the center of the cassette. That gives you optimal chain line, so the chain only has to stretch a certain amount in both directions. It's kind of equal. If it's too biased to the outside, okay, so it's going to feel nice in the larger gears, but your chain's really going to be stretching across the block at the back, and that's not ideal. So do take into account your chain line and the chain ring size. Now firstly, you're going to need a specific tool. In this case, it's actually an old Shimano bottom bracket tool for the race face system. Uh, it's quite a big tool. You can use it with a ratchet, you can use it with a spanner, or in my case, with a vise. A vise is a, a good friend because it means there's no chance of accidentally slipping. You can just move the crank against it. So uh, if you can, that's a good way to use a tool like this. It simply engages on the back there and you undo it. However, this particular one tightens to 40 Nm, so that's pretty tight. Uh, so you've got to expect that when you undo them. Uh, some of them might have been accidentally tightened uh, even more than that, so be aware of that when you are loosening them. As with any tool, make sure the splines interface correctly and fully, and you put a good amount of weight on the actual crank itself when you start undoing it, because you do not want this to slip. Yeah, you can actually feel that one go in there. So yours might be much tighter. If it is, you just need to be cautious. Take your time, don't rush it. And hopefully, there we go. Crank comes straight off in this case, and there is our chain ring. Now on the race face chain rings, you can actually mount them in any orientation, but with other brands, you can actually only orientate them in a single position. So it does make things a bit easier, uh, but still you want to double check if there is an orientation uh, that it should be sat in. It's a really good idea to make sure that you clean all this sort of uh, the old sort of dried on mud and grime from the back of the crank here and the same with the lock ring. Treat that to a bit of fresh grease just on the threads there and make sure when you put the actual chain ring on it has a good clean fit. If you get any grime on the inside of here that's where creaking can develop. Uh, so it's up to you at this point, clean and a nice good installation. So a small amount of grease just on the threads. Don't forget as you tighten this the uh, it will carry that grease around so you don't need to go crazy. And then I'm gonna put that back on the tool. I'm actually gonna put a tiny bit of grease just on the interface here. Now this grease is carbon safe. If, like on Blake's bike here, you have carbon cranks, make sure uh, you have a carbon safe grease in your collection. If in doubt, head to the website of the particular brand of grease you've got if you need to check that. You don't want an aggressive grease that can damage the surface of your carbon fiber. Now, depending on the brand of chainring, it might have a specific orientation. In this case, there's a little arrow here, so that will be in line with that crank arm. Uh, so I'm just gonna line this one up here. And that slides onto place on the back there. Now we're just gonna sit this over the top of the tool there. Now, as with anything threaded, do a couple of turns the opposite way before you tighten it, just to make sure it's sat into place correctly. And then, very carefully, start tightening it. So that's feeling like it's tightening well. Now you might want to check it at this point just to make, it, make sure it's on straight, so you're not damaging anything by accident if you over tighten it if it's cross threaded. Uh, this one looks fine. Now on the back here, it does tell you, you should use 40 newton meters of torque to tighten this with a torque wrench. 
Now, some people don't have torque wrenches, so you're gonna have to use common sense here, but that is very tight. Uh, so I would recommend tightening that securely. I'm actually gonna use a torque wrench here just to demonstrate the fact it is a safety item, so it is recommended if you can to look at one. So first up, we're gonna get our torque wrench and we're gonna dial it into 40 newton meters. Now in an ideal world, you would have your crank arm in some soft closed jaws, but I'm choosing not to with this carbon crank here. Uh, so I'm just gonna be very careful in how I do this, just to make sure that I've got enough torque on this. So I have actually tightened it. I just wanna check that it's about right. And you'll know when you're at the correct torque setting because the torque wrench won't let you go any harder. It will click like this. Okay, so we have our fresh chain ring remounted back onto the race face crank there. Uh, I've checked it to 40 newton meters, so I did tighten up in the vise, but just checked it with the tool there just to make sure it was safe. And now we're good to sort of reverse that process and start getting the cranks back on the bike again. Well, there we go, that's how you install a direct mount chain ring. Like I said, there are some variations, but this principle pretty much the same across brands. Uh, if you've got any comments or any questions, let us know underneath in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video. Ta-ra.